Selection Sunday is just over a week away, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders are set to make the NCAA tournament in year number one of Grant McCaslin. In today's video, we'll discuss the upside of the Red Raiders in the NCAA tournament and why no team wants to see the Red Raiders in their bracket. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you want to join the most engaging group of Texas Tech fans here and, well, the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube, just do these three simple things for me. Like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. And while you're by that like button right there, you might as well hit it if you think the Red Raiders will win an NCAA tournament game this year. Obviously, we don't know the bracket yet, but Texas Tech, they're one of those teams where we'll talk about it in great length here in just a minute about why I think they're a team that no one wants to see in their bracket for three factors. And if you think the Red Raiders will win an NCAA tournament game in year number one of Grant McCaslin, simply like the video. All right, let's look at some key metrics real quick and really the overall resume for the Red Raiders as it currently stands right now going into the final weekend of Big 12 play where they will play the Baylor Bears, the number 11 Baylor Bears, on senior night. Now, Texas Tech has a chance to finish in the top four of the Big 12, which would go a long way for them. But when it comes to overall metrics in terms of analytics and everything, Ken Palm has the Red Raiders as the 30th best team in the country. Net, they are 35. They moved up seven spots after that dominant win in Stillwater. The BPI, Basketball Power Index, for those that don't know, have the Red Raiders at 28. And then SOR has the Red Raiders at 21. Now, Texas Tech as a whole has four quad one wins. They can add another one to their resume, potentially against Baylor or in Kansas City, depending on their seating and how that team fares out in some of those metrics. Now, overall, where is Texas Tech currently projected in bracketology? And again, we'll know exactly where the Red Raiders are in less than 10 days. That's how close we are to the NCAA tournament. But bracket metrics, a site that really goes through and kind of gives every bracketology site a score. So if one site has them as a seven seed, they put it in there and then they average it out. They have the Red Raiders as a seven seed right now. ESPN has Texas Tech as the eighth seed in the Midwest region. They would face off against the familiar opponent in Buzo up at Boise State. Now, CBS is the highest on the Red Raiders right now. They have Texas Tech currently projected to be a six seed against a team that I know I wouldn't want to play, and that's the Indiana State Sycamores, the Trees. And then you've got Bracketville, who also has Texas Tech as an eight seed in the Midwest, but facing off against the Rams of Colorado State. Now, before we get into why I think Texas Tech is a team that legitimately no other opposing coach would want to play in March Madness, I got to tell you about today's video sponsor, and that is, well, Homefield Apparel. March Madness is right around the corner, people. You need to go get your new vintage Texas Tech shirt today. Three of my favorite Texas Tech shirts have come from Home Field Apparel. I promise you it'll be one of your favorites as well. And the best part about it, when you use the code BACK to 12, you can save 15% off your entire purchase. So head on over to homefieldapparel.com. The link will be in the description and in the comments below to get your new favorite Texas Tech shirt. And you might as well save 15% while doing it and use the code BACK to 12. All right. When you look at everything in terms of where Texas Tech is at and why I truly think no one wants to play them in March, okay? There's a couple of factors here. Let's just kind of lay the groundwork, though, for Texas Tech. This team is full of shooters. As we all know, there's four really good shooters on this team, okay? Whatever your thought process is on pop, you can have it. You've also got Chance. You've got Kerwin. You've also got Darion, right? Those guys, when they are on from three, each team that Texas Tech plays has to respect them. Now, what does that create in turn? Well, driving lanes for guys like Joe Tucson. And also, it allows better opportunities at the rim for guys like Robert Jennings, Ameli Elahu, and hopefully a Warren Washington, who could potentially have almost a month off between the last game that he played at UCF and the first tournament game for the Red Raiders in the NCAA tournament, not the Big 12 tournament. So there's the possibility of that. And if you have a 75%, 80% Warren Washington, a guy that can go in there and give you 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops, that changes the dynamic and the trajectory of Texas Tech in March Madness. But let's just talk about the things that we know right now. Rebounding and physicality has been an issue for the Red Raiders this year. That being said, they are easily within 
the most physical conference in America. They're battle tested, right? When it comes down to this, every team that Texas Tech plays is not going to have that advantage in terms of playing in the Big 12, night in and night out, having damn near a quad one opportunity each and every night, let alone the most physical league in America. Remember, the, the earliest Texas Tech can play a Big 12 opponent is in the second weekend. And we might be talking about the second weekend here in just a second. But no other coach in America can really, outside of Big 12 coaches, get prepared for that because you haven't gone through that gauntlet. Sure, the SEC is a solid conference. Sure, the Big East is a solid conference. It's not the Big 12. It's simply not. And Texas Tech has proven in a year where whatever your thoughts and feelings are about this roster, they can win basketball games. And that's because of the likes of Grant McCaslin and the buy-in of each and every guy on this roster that plays meaningful minutes. So the three things that stand out to me for Texas Tech in terms of why no team wants to play them in March Madness is this. Shooting. You got a guy like Pop Isaacs. He's streaky, but he just doesn't bring shooting as well. He is a solid, reliable playmaker that allows guys on the roster around him, whether that's Chance Kerwin, Darion, whoever it may be, to have more space for their shots because of the, well, opportunities that pop creates because of defense is really just latching onto him as the primary playmaker for Texas tech. Also, we just talked about it battle tested. There's no team in the big 12 that hasn't gone through an absolute gauntlet this year. And when you get to March madness, it almost feels like it's a little bit easier in some regards. Now, obviously that's not the case, but you know that you're tested in terms of you virtually seeing everything that you can see on an away atmosphere, let alone a neutral site. So you have that also for Texas Tech. They simply just don't quit, right? And that's one thing that I don't think you can have a metric for. I don't think you can look at the box score and be like, ah, did Texas Tech quit in this game? No, you watch it and you see it each and every night. They don't quit regardless of what the score is. And so that's something that really irritates other coaches in the sense of RC. You're probably thinking RC like, yeah, of course the team doesn't quit. Every coach in America knows the team doesn't quit. You, you're lying to yourself if that's, the case in terms of each and every coach thinks that about other teams, right? There's there's plenty of clips you can go look at and watch and everything like that where it's like the coaches say in the huddle, we know they're going to quit if you do this. You can't say that about Texas Tech, and that is huge for the Red Raiders going into March Madness. That being said, my ceiling for Texas Tech this year is the second weekend, so the Sweet 16. Now, a lot of things have to go right. You have to go in, and you probably don't want to be on that eight line because if you do win, you're more than likely playing a one seed, and that's not ideal. But if Texas Tech plays up to their capabilities and how good they can be and how good they've shown they can be in terms of on the offensive end, whether that's shooting and making shots from deep, creating space, getting out in transition, and making sure defensively, they are aware of where their guys are in terms of making shots difficult. I think Texas Tech has a chance to make the second weekend. Now, am I going to predict that right now? No, I need to see the bracket, but the potential is there. And one thing I haven't talked about really at all, you have Grant McCaslin and you have this coaching staff. And this coaching staff will put you in the position to win every game you play now it just comes down to the Jimmys and the Joes on the floor at that point. And sometimes, well, the other team has something to say about that, as we all know. But I truly believe that this Texas Tech team, their ceiling in March in the NCAA tournament is the second weekend. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know, again, by simply liking the video, do you think the Texas Tech Red Raiders men's basketball team will win a game in the NCAA tournament this year? Not a why for yes or in for no. Just simply like the video and, hey, you might as well like the video. And anyway, if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long portal season, well, that's not in the too distant future for Texas Tech. But right now, the focus, it's the NCAA tournament and hopefully winning that game against Baylor on Saturday and having a good showing out in Kansas City. But I want to hear from you guys as well. Let me know by simply liking the video if you think the Texas Tech Red Raiders will win an NCAA tournament game in year number one of Grant McCaslin by, well, again, simply liking the video. I'm R.C. Maxfield. Also, well, here's the thing. I got to tell you guys, if y'all stick around to the end of the video, this is big. When we have that first game for Texas Tech in the NCAA tournament, we will have a live stream here on the channel. We'll be going live. We can't show the game, obviously. We'll have a scoreboard, live commentary. Y'all will be able to interact with us live. I'll have a guest on here as well. You're going to want to stay in the know for that. So three simple steps to do that. And just you want to join the most engaging group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube. I know you do. 
So do these three simple things. Like the video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.